911, what is your emergency? Um, yes, the car just came down the road and slipped. The night of the accident, the drunk driver was going between 80 and 90 miles per hour. He hit a mailbox and a telephone pole and then hit Andrew. And later... I said it earlier. And I get emotional. It's the spirit of the fact that he has going on inside him that says, I'm not giving up. Damn it, I don't care. This is who I am, and I'm going to make this work. That's Andrew. Montel Williams is back today with a story that will speak to everyone at home watching, whether you're a man, a woman, a parent, a son, a daughter. Medical emergencies can happen to any family at any time, but how you deal with it is up to you. This is Andrew's story. Andrew was born premature, and because of the early pregnancy, he ended up with cerebral palsy. It was devastating. Walking was not easy for him. He had to wear braces on his legs. He would fall a lot, but it didn't really matter to Andrew. He'd just fall, get up. He was so determined to walk and to live a normal life. He dove right into weightlifting and was the best at it. When it was time for the graduation and he came walking across, it was just really a great thing to see him accomplish that. He had a new girlfriend. He was dual enrolled in college. He was just living life to the fullest. 911, what is your emergency? Um, yes, the car just came down the road and slipped the night of the accident. The drunk driver was going between 80 and 90 miles per hour. He hit a mailbox and a telephone pole and then hit Andrew. The doctor came out and told us that he probably would not make it. When I actually woke up, I heard the beep, 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 the heart monitor. I said, well, you've shattered your pelvis. You have six fractures in your arm, your ACL, your MCL, your PCL, and your LCL. They're all torn, and your leg was severed by the pelvis. At that point, I more or less just went to sleep and cried. He was in the hospital for seven months. He went through a real deep depression. You miss things that make you happy. You miss the smell of the air. You miss going to work. You miss life. It just seemed so unfair. He's been through so much. I had cerebral palsy. I fought through it. I worked hard. And I walked again. And to have that taken away is just devastating. I want to paint a picture for everyone in the audience, everyone at home. I'm an ER doctor and I see a lot of injuries, but what Andrew went through in that critical hour, what we call the golden hour, his leg was literally ripped from his body. Arteries, muscles torn from him. He lost a colossal amount of blood, required massive transfusions. One of the trauma surgeons said less than 5% chance of survival. And that he survived this injury, that he survived this accident, is a miracle in and of itself. But emotionally, you said he lost his spirit. Mm -hmm. What was that like? He was in the ICU for three months. And then the fourth month, they, he was in a room, and they were getting ready to do another surgery. And they told him at that time that they didn't know if they would be able to save his leg. He went into a really deep, deep depression and refused to eat. He was just starving himself, and it was horrible. Not only did he go through this accident, this is a young man who fought his whole life to get beyond, you know, uh, cerebral palsy, to get up and walk. He fought to do that. He fought to look normal. He fought to act normal. Then all of a sudden, at 19, somebody rips that away. Now they rip away one leg. He's in the hospital three months later. They're saying, we may have to amputate the other one. And he's 19 years old. so. Let's, as we paint the picture, think about the 19-year-old that you may have at home. Would they have said, I want to give up? But it's the spirit of the fact that that young man fought as a child? Psh, I said it earlier, and I get emotional. You guys gave me something 
seeing Andrew. You, you gave me an, a, a sense of the fact that I think I battle my illness. I need to smack myself and, and look in the mirror and say, stop being so stupid. Because my battle, which I thought was real, now I realize and I look at this young man, it's not because let's, the severity of his injury is worse than mine. That battle that he has going on inside of him that says, I'm not giving up. Damn it, I don't care. This is who I am. You're going to take me, and I'm going to make this work. That's Andrew. Montel actually flew down to Florida. He wanted to meet with Andrew to see if there was some way that he could help bring back some of the determination that had defined Andrew's life. Andrew, my goodness. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you, man. Tell me what your dreams were five days before this accident. I wanted to get my own car. I wanted to be in the yarders. You're wondering why, right? All the time. Back all the time. Yeah. There's times where I dream that I'm walking through horrible because it reminds me of what I miss. Overcoming cerebral palsy that way. You had to work through your legs to begin with. Yeah. I never seen CP as something that happened. It was genetic. I was born with it, so I accepted it. This was hard to just accept this way, right? <laughs> yeah. I won't be able to swim anymore. Why can't you swim anymore? You can do anything you want. I've got pain in my feet and my legs. My left leg doesn't really work. I started snowboarding after I got diagnosed with MS. Wow. It's a choice. It's the choice, man. Every hour of every day, I have to make the choice to stay positive. So I want to go over to the location of the accident. Yeah. Do you want to try to do it? Absolutely. I mean, you'd be there. I mean, that's what I'd definitely be there for you. In some ways, this is like a funeral for me, but one I'm looking forward to. Good. How you feeling? A little taken. Are you checking out the spot right now? Yeah. Right here? It. This was a war zone. There was no lights, there was uh, trash everywhere, live wires, electricity, and then my blood, and, and then the, the leg way down that way. These marks from These are skid marks. These are still that's, skid marks. That's from the car. This is it. How you feeling right now? I, I've got this lump in my throat, but it's not like a crying lump. It's, it's just, I'm swallowing it all. It's not half of what I thought it was going to be. It's part of like lowering the casket. Will you come by here anymore? No, but uh, I feel refreshed right now. Like, word, like. <laughs> Next, Montel finds a very special way to inspire Andrew. So if you or anyone you know is dealing with a medical obstacle in their lives right now, you cannot miss what's coming up.